Hey guys, Garrett McLaughlin here. I want to run you through five different squat variations that are more knee friendly. Um, so when it comes to knee friendly exercises, uh, and especially with the squat, position of the knees is important. Again, making sure you're sitting back and making sure those knees are out aligned with that second toe are important throughout all of these. So make sure you take those two principles and apply that to every single squat. The first squat variation is actually an isometric hold. So what we wanna do in this one is just teach the body how to get into more of a, a hip bias position and how to drive the knees into the band to get better glute engagement. So I have here is uh, a very again, simple piece of exercise equipment, the mini band or the ankle loop. But if we take this mini band, put it around both legs, we're gonna do what's called reactive neuromuscular training. So I'm trying to provide a stimulus of pulling those knees inward because I want to drive the knees out, reinforce a good foot position, and engage more through the, through the glutes and the hips. Okay, so with this hip bias squat, this is an isometric hold, which means we're not actually gonna move. We're gonna hold this position for 15, 30, 45, 60 seconds just to build the proper pattern because we're gonna build upon this within the next squat variations. So with this, feet about hip width are slightly wider, toes just a little bit out. I'm gonna drive my knees out. So just to show you from the side view, more of a hip bias position. I'm gonna hinge from my hips a little more, push my butt back as I lower into the squat, and I'm gonna hold that position for a period of time. So I always wanna think of using the abs, creating some stability around the core, seeing the hips back, knees are out pointing where the second toes are pointing, butt is back. I'm feeling a lot of stress around the quads and the glutes here as I hold that position. And I'm gonna hold that just to reinforce the proper mechanics and positioning that we're gonna build upon. But to see from the front here, feet about hip width are slightly wider, knees automatically, I'm pulling the knees into the band. So this is providing that stimulus for me to push against, which you can do without the band and you should be able to do at some point, but in the beginning, using the band is very important to help just get that proper position and to feel it a lot more because now I'm being pulled in so I can contract those muscles and feel the hips fire. Then from there, sit back, butt back, core. I'm just gonna hold that position right there, 15, 30, 45, 60 seconds, trying to build up each week in time. But that's a great starting point to put the knees in a good position for the squat. The next exercise is a squat with a counterbalance. So with this one, I like to sit down at the bench just to teach the body how to reach back. Weight comes in front to help really balance out the body. So you can sit into the hips a lot more. Again, always don't feel like you need to get rid of the band. Still continue to use the band if that helps reinforce that position. But at some point, I want you to get away from this because you have already taught the body how to can drive the knees out and to be in that proper position. So feel free to go back to that if you need it. So with this next variation, using a plate, again, 10 pound plate here, nothing much, doesn't have to be anything drastic, but it's not a shoulder exercise. It's a, it's a lower body, you can squat movement. So here, thinking mechanics, and my hips are about hip width is slightly wider, toes slightly out, uh, foot can rotate out a little bit. The knees have to match that position, so I'm gonna drive my knees out with the second toe. And then as I go to sit back, I wanna initiate sitting the butt back first, and then I'm gonna press this weight in front, because that counterbalance is gonna help balance me. I'm gonna feel more stable and secured. My foot's gonna stay flat on the ground, my, my both feet, I'm not gonna come up and start extending my toes. And I'm gonna go through a series of eight, 10, 12 squats with the counterbalance. Again, finding a weight that works for you, that balances you out the best. Obviously, we don't wanna be struggling to press out in front, get the lightest weight possible to feel comfortable balancing in that position. But that first variation here with the, with the squat with counterbalance actually incorporates movement, teaches the body how to sit back into the hips while keeping a nice balance and upright spine throughout the squat. So now that we worked on the counterbalance squat, taught the body how to sit back, taught the knees how to drive out, and had that counterbalance in front to really help balance out the body within that movement pattern, can better for the knees because we're sitting back into the hips more and not coming down in a way where the knees are forward. Okay, so just teaching those principles step by step as we progress the squat. Next one, just a regular sit to stand. Now we do not have any counterbalance in front, so a lot of people look at this and say, oh, it's not as, as heavy. You're right, it's not as challenging from a weight perspective because we don't have a plate or a dumbbell in front of us, but we also do not have that help of the weight to sit back into the hips to balance the body. So now we're relying on ourselves to get in the right position to balance out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is set up in the same position, make sure knees are coming out. Again, don't want the knees collapsing inward and our butt is going to push back. 
So sit to stand is just teaching the body now without the help of the plate, how to sit back into the hips to keep more of a vertical shin. Again, the more the knee comes forward, the more stress we'll start to feel around the, uh, the knee joint. So we want less of an angle throughout the shins as we go down. Butt back, knees out, standing tall at the very end, making sure we're not coming up here and stopping short where there's still a, a degree of flexion at the knee or hip. We wanna come forward, drive the hips forward, stand up tall, lock out the legs, and then sit back down. So even though there is less weight there, it is a harder variation, teaching the body how to balance out, making sure the knees are in the correct position, we have good alignment of the limb, but that's sit to stand at the next variation that I really recommend mastering before we start to add resistance, which we will within this next, next squat variation. Okay, so now it's time to actually add some good resistance to the squat. You have your position, you know your principles, knees out, hips back, nice tall spine. Okay, so what we wanna do is actually the goblet squat, which is a good first step. And start with something light and then progress weight as you, you get stronger and feel like you mastered the movement. So with the goblet squat, all those principles are the same. The squat hasn't changed at all from that sit to stand, but now we're holding this weight, holding it up under. Again, if it's a dumbbell, kettlebell, you'd be holding it by, by the horns around the, the top of the dumbbell. We're gonna hold this right to the chest. I like to squeeze shoulder blades back, keep good posture as I'm in this position. And then from here, all I'm gonna do, because the weight is in front, not as far as the, as the counterbalance squat, but it does help you sit back into the hips because that weight is forward. Again, feel free at all times, continue to use the bench if you need to, but now that we're at a point where you're actually adding resistance into the squat, the knees are feeling good, you've been working on the squat now, most likely if you made it to this point for a few months to get to that goblet squat, um, but using the bench will be good, but making sure that bench is the correct height. I don't want you to add weight to the squat unless you are able to get down to a good depth. So typically I like to get down thighs parallel to the ground, and that's a good degree of motion to get to. If you're someone that says, man, I can only get this far, in my squat because the knees hurt or I don't have the strength or the mobility to get down. Work on those other areas first. Get the range of motion to be able to get down deeper before you start adding resistance. That's one thing I commonly see in a lot of, uh, a lot of gyms is people will go really heavy, but you, you watch them do the movement and it's these are small movements. Again, those have their time and their place depending on what you're working on. But if you're looking at function of the knees and keeping the knees healthy, I wanna make sure you have the range of motion to get down into that position before you start weighting the squat. So that is the goblet squat. So the fifth and final squat variation that I wanna show here, kinda of in the sequence on how to keep the knees healthy in a good position. Now that we worked on reinforcing all those basics before, hips back, knees out, progressing to a position where we don't need as much counterbalance, we're more balanced, we're more upright, and we're using those muscles the right way. Now we have the landmine squat. So all the landmine is, again, sounds crazy, but landmine is just a barbell. You can see this barbell set up here. It's just in the corner of the squat rack. It's just sitting there, so there's no weight on that end at all. But this side, you can see you can start to add more resistance to it. So the bar is 45 pounds, adding a 25 pound plate on that. It's a very good exercise to start adding more resistance to once you've reinforced all those basics before, and now you wanna add some good resistance on top of, uh, on top of the squat pattern. Because the goblet squat, to, to a certain degree, when you, when you start increasing weight and you start to get heavier, um, a lot of women start to get to 45, 55 pounds and, and up, it's really hard and awkward to hold, hold that big dumbbell in front of you, uh, especially guys once you start adding more weight. So doing something like this is a lot easier to handle and to lift more weight in the process. So with this, this landmine squat, what I like about this is it being in front of you once again, so it's more front loaded. So you can sit the, back, the hips back into the squat, knees are out, feet are flat, hips are engaged. Okay, the knees are in a good healthy position, staying up more, again, shins in a vertical alignment as opposed to being knees so forward this way. This squat variation helps really um, allow you to sit in that proper position, getting all those things down. So what we're gonna do here is to lift up. Barbell is gonna come right to the chest. I'm gonna sit back a little bit, almost like you see here, I'm, I'm leaning forward against the, against the bar, and I'm gonna sit butt back, and lower down, knees are out, my elbows are almost going right to my thighs, so I'm getting good depth, thighs parallel to the ground, I'm gonna drive up and forward. So my position is slightly different in that I'm driving forward as opposed to upward, but that's the position that this landmine squat is going to reinforce 
as you can see, I drive up, drive hips forward, straighten everything out. But as the bar comes down, it's actually causing me to sit back into my hips. My butt is pushing back because if I want to come this way, it doesn't really let me down that position, knees coming forward. So it's more of a hip biased position, butt back, knees out and drive. So once I do that, I can work on really developing some good strength within the squat pattern. Again, starting with the lighter weight, more repetitions, and then really adding some good resistance on this and staying low in the rep range. Um, two to six repetitions, really build some good strength. Now that you know you worked on the basics as far as keeping those knees in a good position, let's reinforce that, adding some good strength on top of the movement pattern. All right guys, thank you for sticking around this long. It was a lengthy video looking at five knee-friendly squat variations. The principles and the technique is always the same regardless of the movement. It's just, this is a way to help progress from more of a stationary isometric hold to actually lifting more weight within the squat that keeps the knees in a more healthy position to hopefully, if you have pain in the past, to help you learn to exercise and put you in positions that you can gradually progress your strength training program to be pain-free. Or if you're someone that is worried about developing pain because you've been told squats are bad for the knees, which they aren't obviously, we just did a lot of squats today in more knee friendly versions, but this will show you a, a very simple progression on how to take that step by step to develop more strength and more quality positioning within your squat. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a, a comment or shoot me a message. Uh, I'd love to help you better fine tune your program to see more success with these knee friendly squat variations.